Kanye West seems to have a beef with everyone, including Peppa Pig, and his fans might have a beef with him. A Britney Spears tell-all is on the way, yes please. Did Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox get hitched? Plus, the music world lost singer Nightbird. All that and a look at your charts on today's show. Hey, it's Tetris, and this is Billboard News for 2 22 What a fun date. And we love to have our editorial staff on with us. Hi, Kristen. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. You ready to jump into this? Yeah, let's do it. Well, we always start with Kanye. <laughs> yep. In the latest Kanye West update, the rapper is publicly calling out who exactly he has beef with, including maybe Peppa Pig. The list is way longer than you might even expect. But first, the album, Done to Two, is not even out yet? Yeah, so fans were thinking that this album was going to come out at midnight, but it didn't show up. And so this is actually supposed to be a very interesting drop for Kanye. It's going to be on his stim player and not on a streaming service. So the stim player is just a little handheld device. You can buy it for $200. Oh my goodness. If I had the album and I was like, I'd just be pressing play until it came yeah. up. 200 bucks? Yeah, $200. And, you know, he never seems to drop things on time, though. So I don't think that fans are that surprised by this. Well, what I am surprised about, though, is his list of beefs. So mm -hmm. someone else posted a list of his beefs. It had the normal name. You know, Kim Kardashian, Pete Davis, and Taylor Swift, but Peppa Pig also met the list. Yeah, I saw Peppa Pig on there and I was really confused. I guess I must have missed that one. I don't know what she did to him <laughs> or what he did to her. I know, I know. But there's uh, he actually commented on this post and was like, actually, this list is twice as long. And he listed off all these other people that he has beef with, including some companies. So he had Apple, Spotify, UMG CEO, Lucien Grange. He also called out Black History Month and Obama. Imagine so. having a beef with Obama. I know. I was really upset that he also put Disney and liberals, and that those two words pretty much describe me. So I'm like, <laughs> honestly, please leave us alone. The Disney adults have enough going on, Kanye. I mean, but yeah. I'm, I guess I'm excited for the album to see what's going to happen. Yeah, I'm excited for the album, too. And also, he has an event tonight in Miami, so we'll see how that goes. Hopefully the album comes out. Where's my stem player? Somebody send me one. <laughs> now, Britney Spears' voice will be heard. The Princess of Pop has a tell-all book on the way, according to reports of a $15 million deal that surfaced on Monday. Yeah, absolutely huge. So Page Six was the first one to report the news. So basically, one of the largest publishing houses, Simon & Schuster, is giving one of the largest sums for a book deal, $15 million, to wow. Britney to talk about her conservatorship, her family drama, and obviously her big pop career. She has so much to cover in this book, I, I can't even imagine. And you know, in January, Jamie Lynn, her sister, dropped her book, Things I Should Have Said, and she already kind of told her side of the whole Britney stuff, and I know a lot of fans had a problem with that, yeah. saying that maybe Jamie shouldn't have been releasing this book so soon after Free Britney. Yeah, so I think that this is gonna be a really good opportunity for Britney to clear the air and to tell her own truth and to tell her own story from her perspective. Um, but you know, after Jamie Lynn's book came out, Britney did go on social media and she posted this graphic of a typewriter and the caption was, shall I start from the beginning? Ooh. So she's been thinking about this one for a little bit, I think. She's so ready and you said the word truth just then and it made me think of one of my favorite Britney lyrics. Mm -hmm. She says, people can take everything away from you but they can never take away your truth. Ooh. Britney. Love We're that. ready for your truth. Encanto continues to dominate two charts as Super Bowl halftime performers make a splash and Justin Bieber breaks a record. Let's break down the charts. Yes, let's. So we don't talk about Bruno, which is from Encanto, leads on the Billboard Hot 100 chart for a fourth week. So this Ooh. is the most popular Disney song on the Hot 100 in history. And I think I have to credit this with TikTok. I know yeah. everybody's listening to the song, but there's so many good Bruno TikToks. Absolutely. Let's take a look at a few. They're so talented. I wish I could do that. I know. I wish I could too. Um, and also the Encanto soundtrack as a whole is also doing really well. So it's still at number one this week on the Billboard 200 albums chart. And that makes it its sixth non-consecutive week at the top of the charts. Wow. And it even kept down some Super Bowl heavyweights. I saw that Eminem's Curtain Call jumped up to number eight on the chart. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Dre's Dr. Dre 2001 jumped up to number nine. So, so much movement happening on so the much. charts this week. And even some Justin Bieber news. Yeah, so Justin Bieber actually actually with his new single Ghost um, hit number one on the pop airplay chart. This is his 10th number one on the pop airplay Whoa. chart. The most among any solo male artists. So congratulations to Justin on that. Wow, congrats Justin. Now before he had to pause his tour due to COVID, I caught him singing the new hit at H. Wood and Revolve Super Bowl party. I'll settle for the ghost of you. I miss you more than life. 
Did Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox secretly get married? Well, according to the NBA All-Star Game this past weekend, they did. Yeah, so the couple went to the game last week and the announcer introduced them by saying, please welcome Machine Gun Kelly and his wife, actress Megan Fox, which... <laughs> Try to put them on blast. <laughs> yeah, it's not true. They have not gotten married yet. They were engaged in January, so they are engaged, but I kind of think it would be funny if they had announced them kind of flipped around. I'm a big Megan Fox fan as please welcome Megan Fox and her husband, Machine oh, Gun Kelly. I don't know. You know, know what? I think if you ask us, she's the bigger star. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. it's a power couple. It's they a are a power couple. couple. <laughs> but then they start whispering. She kind of put her hand over her face like, mm -hmm. oh, what do you think they were saying? You know, I think they were just joking around. They are so much fun together. They have such great chemistry. I don't know if you ever caught their GQ interview, the joint one. Um, it's on YouTube and it's so much fun to watch because they just clearly are in, so in love and just having a great I time together. I see them on a date with Kim and Pete. Oh, you know what? Also, Courtney and Travis would be fun to have in Oh my God, too. can you yeah. imagine being on a fly on the wall in Malibu during mm. that? What a time. And even Macy Gray performed at that show. So yeah. I think that was a great game all around. I wish I had been there. I know. Incredible. Good times. Well, coming up, we're highlighting Black History Month with a look into the Supreme. Today we're celebrating a little black history and music with this iconic accomplishment. On October 22, 1966, the Supremes became the first female group to top the Billboard 200. Also the first number one for any black female artist or group with their album, The Supremes A Go-Go. So they started out as the pre in 1959 and signed to Barry Gordy's Motown Records in 1961 as The Supremes. They were Motown's most commercially successful group throughout the 60s, an incredible achievement. Wow, and the Supremes are still America's vocal group with the most chart success with 12 Billboard Hot 100 topping singles. That's tied with Madonna and more than Whitney Houston who has 11 and Janet Jackson and Stevie Wonder who both have 10. Their single, You Can't Hurry Love, which was the biggest hit off of their chart topping, the Supremes A Go-Go, was number one on the Hot 100 for 13 weeks. I mean, what a hit that is. I love hearing it at weddings. I mean, here's a clip of them performing it on The Ed Sullivan Show. I mean, what a great song. Yes, what a great song. And this album really catapulted them to success. The following year, Barry Gordy rebranded the group as Diana Ross and the Supremes, obviously the big front runner of that group. Um, and three years later in 1970, Diana Ross left the group to start her solo career and went on to be one of the most iconic solo vocalists in American history. So they are wow. just iconic. Diana Ross and the Supremes. Cheers to them and all their accomplishments. Now, we do have to switch gears to a much sadder story. Jane Nightbird Marchewski, a contestant on season 16 of America's Got Talent, has died following a battle with cancer. She was 31. Yeah, so Jane Marchewski performed under the name Nightbird on America's Got Talent, and she was one of those really rare golden buzzer moments from Simon Cowell. She performed this beautiful original song called It's Okay, and it was all about her battle with cancer and about her prognosis. It was truly an inspiring moment. Yeah, I mean, it was an incredible moment on the show. Let's take a listen. Okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. If you're lost, we're all a little lost, and it's all right. I mean, honestly, what a beautiful song. And of course, beautiful. everybody's been going on social media to talk about this. In her final post, Nightbird actually remained positive amid her deteriorating health, saying that honestly, things have been pretty brutal. But in this photo of myself from last week, I feel pretty alive, awake, human, and real. Yeah, she really stayed positive until the end and was such an inspiration to so many people. Um, so some of the America's Got Talent family kind of got on social media as well to share their condolences and their thoughts. Um, so Terry Crews wrote on Instagram on Monday, we are saddened to learn about Nightbird's passing. Our condolences go to her closest family and friends in this difficult time. We love you, Nightbird. And then Judge Heidi Klum also shared a tribute to the singer by sharing on her Instagram story, we love you, rest in peace, Nightbird. So. Well, we send our condolences to all her family and fans. What an amazing talent. Well, thank you for hanging out here with me yeah, today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course, yeah. anytime. Make sure you guys come back tomorrow for more Billboard News. I'm Tetris Kelly.